Hey guys, this is MJ. It is truly locating and educating prodigals at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is more imminent today, this very second than it ever has been. Come Lord Jesus. I wanted to show you my shirt. I got my shirt on. Normal isn't coming back. Jesus is. So we know normal is not coming back. It's getting exponentially worse every single day. And we can rejoice in that fact. The worse it gets, the better it is for us. I know people call us crazy and you know, we are a very peculiar breed Christians. Um, but I'm going to share a little bit, um, blow your mind. I'm going to share a little bit from my journal and, um, I know I'm getting on here late tonight. Um, but this is like mind blowing to me. It's exciting. But first I want to share the gospel. If you're not saved, if you're not born again, you don't know what that means. You're not a Christian. Listen up. Okay. Jesus is coming soon and very soon to rapture his bride. The rapture and the second coming are two separate events. We, the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, the church, are not appointed to that wrath. That's soon to happen in the tribulation. Um, we will be harpazo, raptured up, taken out just in the nick of time. God knows everything from beginning to end. And this age of grace is getting ready to close. This has been what has been called the age of grace. And we're getting ready for the 70th week of Daniel, not us, the Jews. Um, the tribulation is for the salvation of the Jewish nation. It has nothing to do with the church. Um, we are not appointed to wrath. Jesus Christ takes our wrath, every bit of that wrath, on the cross. We do not suffer that wrath. We are not appointed to that wrath. Understand. So Jesus said we must be born again. Okay. So how do we get born again? You hear people talk about born again. It's not a cult. It's not, you know, it's not a certain religious, you know, this has nothing to do with religion. Understand this has to do with a personal relationship with the only God there ever has been. So however you think you're going to get to heaven, fill in your own blank. The only way to the father is through the son. So the gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, that he was buried and on the third day rose again, according to scripture. That is the simple gospel of our salvation, guys. God has not complicated this stuff. Man has complicated it. Satan has complicated it. Church is complicated. Religion complicates it. Our own flesh complicates this. It is not complicated. We are all born into this condition called sin. All of us from conception were conceived in this condition called sin. So we have to be born again into Christ righteousness because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us, none of us are righteous. No, not one. That's why God had to come himself in human form, wrapped in flesh himself and do what no man could do. Okay. Save Jesus Christ, the son of God. All right. Understand that we are all born into this condition of sin. So how do we get saved? Okay, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not come into this world to condemn this world, but that through him we might all be saved. Um, if you're not saved, if you're not born again, you're already condemned by your own sin. Understand that. Um, so we simply admit, yes, I am a sinner in need of a savior. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God recognize that B is to believe. And this is key. Believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead for your own personal sins, not only for the sins of the whole wide world, but your own personal sins. He is your substitution, your mediator. You know, he took our place where we should have been because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. Our Lord understand he is the resurrection. He is the life. Everybody will die one day. Okay. Everybody will spend eternity somewhere. I take that back about all of us dying. 
there is one generation who will be raptured on their feet. Okay? The rapture is when that trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ rise first, and we who are alive and remain will be caught up with them in those clouds and ever so be with our Lord. So there is one final generation that will be raptured on their feet. And I believe that's us. And it's very, very clear. It is very, very clear. All right, so if you're not saved, if you're not born again, and you hear his voice today, do not harden your heart. Come to him. God will show you. At the moment of salvation, the Holy Spirit moves in, takes up residence inside this unworthy temple, speaks to us. He's our counselor, our guide, our best friend, the paraclete, the counselor. Having We have God in our own unworthy temples. That just blows my mind. But at the moment of salvation, you are sealed until the day of redemption. Sealed. So you cannot lose your salvation, friend. Regardless of what pastors have told you, people have told you, preachers have told you, churches have told you, that's the enemy. Because Jesus said, all that you have given me, Father, I will return them all back to you. Okay, so everyone who belongs to God has belonged to God from before the foundations of this earth. Read the book of Ephesians. And we are not saved by works. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God. Understand, the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. All right, so picture it, the most magnificent wedding of all time, the marriage supper of the Lamb, so timely and divine. It's an eternal celebration beyond our wildest dreams, where the Lamb of God is worshipped and his love reign supreme. Don't miss the invitation to the greatest gift of all. Very soon that trumpet will sound and great will be your fall. You can still come to Jesus Christ during the tribulation. That's what's called tribulation saints after chapter four in the book of Revelation. You can still come to Christ during the tribulation, but your life will be required of you through beheading or whatever. I mean, some people will make it into the millennial kingdom, uh, but most people, your life will be required of you and your life will be miserable. And so do it now. Don't wait. Don't wait. People say, I'll wait till the tribulation comes. That's stupid. That's just plain stupid. Okay. All right. So regarding yesterday's video, okay, this is about, the Lord has been showing me a lot of stuff about yesterday's video. You know, all the nations, 153 nations signed it. This is all, you know, you can listen to yesterday's video. But the number 153, um, the Lord showed me that 153, 153 nations that signed aboard at COP28 is also 1 Thessalonians 5, 3, 1, 5, 3. When they are saying peace, and safety. Sudden destruction will come upon them and they will not escape. That's not referring to us, the church. They will not escape. But you are not a they. I am not a they. We are sons and daughters of the light. Understand that. So we are about to be raptured. We are not a they. Be a we. We are we. Um, we are sons and daughters of God, the Most High God. Okay, so we are getting fixing to be raptured any moment. I'm not a date setter. I'm not one of, I don't set dates. It's going to happen on this time because of this. The rapture is imminent. And Jesus told us to lift up our heads and look up for our redemption draws nigh. And I'm telling you today, is sooner than it was yesterday, one day closer to looking into our Savior's face. And I know it's going to happen soon and very soon. So a couple of my subscribers told me, which I found interesting because I did not know this. And thank you for sharing this with me. I'll take a sip of water. 
because that's been my study like all day today and I've been obsessed with this 153. So 153 were the nations that were signing. Also 1 Thessalonians 5.3. When they are saying peace and safety, that's exactly what they're saying right now. Peace and safety. Then sudden destruction will come upon them and they will not escape. Okay, so the 153 is also the number of fish that were caught uh, in the net. When Jesus, uh, the mirac in the miraculous story um, in John chapter 21, uh, interestingly enough, this took place uh, just after Jesus' resurrection, where he revealed himself to seven of his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And I was just there, also known as the Sea of Galilee. But we were just there in September. I'm going to tell you, uh, unforgettable, unforgettable, beautiful. And to know that Jesus was there. I mean, our trip to Israel was so surreal and such a pilgrimage in our faith. Um, I wouldn't recommend going now. I know a few brothers and sisters that are there now, but um, I will always cherish those memories. And we just got back just in the nick of time. Um, thank you, Jesus. We got back September 9th and then October 7th. Um, this all unfolded. So this is in the story where Jesus, um, they were fishing, the disciples were fishing, and they had been fishing all night and didn't catch anything. And the resurrected Jesus walked by them and they didn't even recognize him, okay, because he had on a coat, cloak. So um, they weren't catching any fish. So they were like calling it quits after all night, you know. So um, the disciples had fished all night and caught nothing until Jesus instructed them to throw out their nets to the right hand, key, to the right hand of the boat. Where's Jesus sitting? At the right hand of the Father. And he is imminently coming back to rapture the church. Okay, and the catch was miraculous. Okay, interesting also is that um, at that time, there were only 153 species of fish. Mind, mind blown. Okay, but it even gets deep, deeper. In Mark 1.17, Jesus calls us fishers of men. You know, and numbers, I've never been into numbers, and, you know, numbers are... They have a very special significance to the Jews. In both Hebrew and Greek alphabets, the letters are also numbers. And God also has a, a book in the Bible called Numbers, so you know it is significant. Um, it's interesting to note that 153 is a numeric value also of the Passover. Hapasach. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but, um, and also the words sons of God. So 153, B'nai Ha Elohim, 153. So hang on to this. The numeric value of the Passover, Ha Pesach, and also the words sons of God, B'nai Ha Elohim, are 153. We are the sons of God that take the message of the gospel. Jesus our Passover to the world. Mind-blowing. I mean, this stuff is mind-blowing to me. I don't know if it isn't to you, and if it isn't, then uh, <laughs> that's okay. It's just me that I've been so blessed today. But I've never been into these numbers, or um, but we know that everything in the Bible is there for a reason. Okay, everything is written for a reason in the Bible um, and is recorded for a reason. It's interesting also that 153 means Anai Elohim. A-N-I Elohim. I am God. So when they caught those fish, Jesus was declaring that not only was he the son of God, but that he was God. He was God himself. Pretty darn deep. 
Proverbs 25, 2 says, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is the glory of a king to search it out. So, these 153 fish actually were given us the identity of our Messiah. That's mind-blowing to me. Interesting also that the right side of the boat um, and Jesus is at the right hand of the Father currently and is imminently returning to rapture his bride. That's us, the church. So thank you all. There are a couple of you who uh, pointed out that there were 153 fish in that boat um, that were caught. We are, Jesus called us to be fishers of men, all right, to bring the Passover, our Passover, Jesus, to the world, okay? That's just so mind-blowing to me. Um, to take this, the Passover and sons of God are both one, five, three. So we are sons of God who are bringing the Passover, Jesus Christ, to the world. That just blows my mind. Because we're getting ready to be raptured, guys. And the gospel, when that last Gentile says yes, it's a done deal. It's a wrap. And God is getting ready to wrap it up. And that final Gentile, and if that's you, and please say yes to Jesus. Um, not that you're holding back, but there is one person that will be the final Gentile. Okay? And God knows who that person is. And then he comes to fulfill his promise to the Jewish people. And that is the time of Jacob's trouble. Not the time of the church's trouble. Not the time of the bride of Christ's trouble. We are going to be at a wedding soon and very soon. So I hope you guys are doing amazing today. Um, I know things are rough, very rough. Things can be, you know, um, don't allow your joy and your peace to be compromised by what's going on in the lives of other people, okay? It's important that we covet that peace and that joy because there's so much spiritual warfare going on right now. So much spiritual warfare. I like to say that if we had, could see in the spirit, would drop over dead. But like Psalm 91 tells us, he gives his angels charge over us. You know, 24 hours of a day, we are guarded by those angels. Okay, so God's got this. All right, but people bring things into our life sometimes, right? They bring their garbage. And we engage ourselves in people's garbage. You know why the enemy does that? Because he doesn't want the gospel to be shared. And so when we're engaged in conflict, and you know, most of the world is in conflict right now. We're getting ready to be raptured, but you know, most of the world is in fear, anxiety. There's 365 times in the Bible that God told us not to fear or be anxious for nothing, not to worry. He did that for a reason. So that there would be no day that we worry, no day that we fear because we put our trust in him. He is our shelter. He, we have to run to him. We have to consciously be still and know that he's God. We have to consciously make a decision to sit down with the word of God because your flesh isn't just going to tell you, hey, let's read the Bible. Your flesh is going to tell you, hey, let's go clean the car or, you know, let's clean the toilet or stuff, you know, random stuff will come up when you sit down with your Bible. And the Bible tells us that that is the nature of the flesh and the spirit to war against one another. So when we engage in other people's conflicts and, you know, we're worried about them, don't worry about your prodigal because, you know, prodigals have to hit brick walls sometimes. And it's, it's hard for us to watch 
our prodigals go through what we know is the end result. But God uses all things. He works all things together for good. Romans 8, 28, my favorite scripture. God causes all things, even this, fill in the blank, put in your own this, even this, to work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. That's us. We are called according to his purpose from before the foundations of this earth. God, the Bible says we are his poema, his workmanship, which I found poema, I found to be mind blowing in itself because in the Greek it's poema, but we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared before the foundations of this earth. Um, are we saved by those works? Absolutely not. We are not saved by those works. But we are called to do those works that God himself prepared before the foundations of the earth. So I'm interested in what are those works? You know, what are they? Um, we're not saved by our works. You know, other religions, they are reaching out, trying to get to God, their God, Buddha, Allah, Muhammad, uh, reincarnation, fill in the blank. People are so very, very confused about religion. This has nothing to do with religion. We are new creations in Christ. It's not like we're trying to rehab the old, okay? We're not trying to rehab the flesh because the flesh can't be rehabbed. That's why it had to be crucified. We're not trying to, yeah, um, you know, make amends for everything that we did in the past, even though, you know, it, it is right to be at peace with everybody. It's not like we spend the rest of our life struggling to make up for what we did in our past. That's not what being born again is. Being born again is having a different identity. Christ righteousness is in us. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. But when God looks at us, he sees Jesus. He sees the righteousness. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Why? Because of what he did. So when God looks at us, he sees perfection. So regardless of what has happened in your day today or in your last week or in your last year or whatever, if you are truly a born again believer, when God the Father looks at us, he sees Jesus. He sees the completed work on Calvary, what happened on Calvary. When Jesus Christ said, it is finished, our sins, past, present, and future were washed in that blood. And you know, we spend, we go overtime in our heads, let me tell you. That's why the Bible tells us to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ Jesus. Because our mind works overtime, doesn't it? I should have done this. I should have said this. I should have done. Don't should on yourself ever. Because the past is the past. Whether it was five minutes ago or 20 years ago. The past, we can do nothing about our past. Being born again simply means being born again, being born into Christ's righteousness because we're born dead. We are born dead in our sins, in our trespasses. That's why we have to be born again. So a lot of people don't understand what born again means and they think it's a concept or it's a church or it's a cult or, you know, whatever. Every true Christian must be born again because we can't stand before God the Father in our own unrighteous rags, in our own filthy rags, okay? Because we have no righteousness in ourselves. We are born into this condition called sin. So when people say, I was born this way, yeah, we all were born this way. Fill in your own blank for whatever your sin of choice is. We were all born into this condition called sin. For that reason, we must be born again. And at that moment, Holy Spirit moves in, seals us, and begins to show us 
Read the word. Study the word. Get in the word. And the enemy will fight you. Uh, have have You have 15 million other things to do. Different things. You, you're playing different songs or doing it. Faith. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of God. So when you're out there driving or you're by yourself, put the word of God on. Put the word of God on. That's what I would do. You know, listen to different pastors um, that you know is teaching. This channel is 100% pre-trib, by the way. Um, pastors that are teach, and I'm not a pastor or teacher, by the way. Simply a redeemed member of the body of Christ. A prodigal brought back from the brink of death in the lifestyle of addiction. And that lifestyle that accompanies it for such a time as this. But pastors that you trust. I listen to J.D. Farag, jdfarag.org. Um, I listen to um, Dr. Chuck Missler. He's got a rapture series that is absolutely wonderful. I mean, I've been listening to it the last couple of days. Um, there's very few people that I listen to, but or recommend be very cautious in who you listen to on YouTube and all these, just be cautious because there are people that will tell you there's a partial rapture. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Jesus Christ is coming to rapture his full church, his body, his bride. We are the bride of Christ. We are going to a wedding there. Are, I mean, cause how much righteousness can you have that you can actually go to the wedding that you can actually be raptured? And, and Christians will be left here behind. That is a lie. Christians will not be left behind. True Christians. Now, there are people that the Bible says, Jesus says, will say to him, Lord, Lord, um, we've done all these things in your name. We've cast out devils and we've done all this stuff and we've been teachers for 20 years and we've done this and, uh, you know, we've judged everybody else for 20, 30 years. Um, why can't we enter the kingdom of heaven? And he will say, depart from me. I never knew you. Those are the scariest words in all of eternity. The only reason any of us can enter into the kingdom of heaven is because of Christ's atoning sacrifice on that cross for us. That he took our place, our judgment, our condemnation. He walked this life in human form, 100% divine, 100% man, so that you and I don't have to stand before God one day and he say, Jesus say, um, depart from me, I never knew you. No, we're in the moment we say I do to Jesus Christ. And, you know, I'd rather be scared into heaven. And that's what happened to me at the age of 11. I was more scared. I, the gospel was shared at my church. I'm, I'm actually a former Catholic. I grew up in Catholicism, went to Catholic school. But my great-grandmother, and God bless my great-grandmother, and I can't wait to see her. She will be one of the first people I see in the air, along with my best friend Susie, who was murdered. Um... She was a non-denominational Christian, and I went to her church one day and walked her through that alley, what I wouldn't give to walk her through the alley to go to church one more time. But walked her through the alley, heard the pastor give a, you know, shared the gospel, and I understood 100% that I was a sinner in need of a Savior, and I believed that Jesus Christ was Lord and that, that he could forgive my sins and that he would forgive my sins. And I called upon his name. I went to the altar that day with my best friend, Susie, um, who was murdered at the age of 25. But at that moment, in all of eternity, my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, God knows all who are going to say yes to him from before the foundations of this earth. He knows all who belong to him, all who will say yes. All who will say no. We have a free will. God doesn't want robots. Okay, so, but I became a prodigal for many years. And 
I'll tell you what, the enemy had me slammed up against so many walls because of my lack of knowledge. So if I can help you to understand that lack of knowledge is a very narrow corridor in the church, but so many people are caught in that narrow corridor of lack of knowledge, of not understanding that Jesus Christ paid it all. That at the moment they became born again, they were eternally born again. Never, never would Jesus leave them or forsake them from that point on. And that he would return all of us back to the Father. And that eternal salvation can never or could ever be lost. Despite what the enemy says behind those pulpits. And there are many pastors that will tell you that you can lose your salvation. And that you must do something to maintain your salvation. No, Holy Spirit inside of us is the one that's teaching us and, and, and guiding us and comforting us and showing us where we are wrong and, and we repent. You know, the Bible says that um, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I mean, being out there in sin for all those years, I mean, I had, I was pretty dirty, but I was still saved. I was still saved. And God had to do a lot, a lot of work. And that's why I advocate for journaling because God will show you so much through your own pen and through a journal. And this is, oh, my friend just sent me this for Christmas, by the way. B, shout out to my friend B. Be still and know that I'm God. And has a little handy dandy thing to shut it with here. But um, I have gone through so many journals, guys. I have ripped up so many letters that I was... The Lord had me to send to somebody, but I ended up putting it in uh, the garbage. And when I was a nurse in drug rehab, I would have a lot of those who were addicted. I don't call them addicts because we're not born an addict. We're not born an alcoholic. We're not born homosexuals. We are born into a condition called sin that we willfully engage in, you know, and our you know, the genetics, our genetics load the gun, but we pull the trigger. You know, I wasn't born an alcoholic. I wasn't born an addict. I was born a sinner in need of a savior. So understand that. Understand that once we come to Christ, we are eternally, eternally his. And God does not abort his own children ever. God will not throw you away because you did such and such. Confess your sins. You know, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That doesn't mean we weren't saved. I mean, every day I go through that. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, I, I call the Holy Spirit the, the eternal. <clears throat> That's who he is. You know, I'll say something or do something and the Lord will. <clears throat> Remember, he's inside. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was outside of people. And at Pentecost, that changed. He lives inside of us now. And he has chosen to take up residence in this unworthy temple. And I will forever give God the glory for that. Because I shouldn't be here to share what I'm sharing with you today. And many of us have that same testimony. And you know what? I want to do something like um, share testimonies. Please, I want to do like Testimony Tuesday or something. I'm thinking of what to do. Um, I want to hear y'all's testimony um, because we all have a testimony. And we're all share, called to share the gospel, the Great Commission. And that final Gentile is about to say yes somewhere in this world. And we are all going to the wedding. And what a day. Oh, what a day that will be when we hear that trumpet sound. When the dead in Christ rise first and we who are alive and remain are caught up with them in those clouds and ever so be with our Lord. Until then, the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words. Um, if we were going through the tribulation, I don't think God would say comfort one another with these words or the Apostle Paul. I don't think the Bible would tell us to comfort one another that you're going to go get your head chopped off. 
okay, um, the tribulation will be the most horrifying, horrifying time on this earth by far. And we are feeling the birth pains now. And as a woman who has given birth to three children, I can tell you labor pains do not reverse. They do not stall even. There's something called Braxton Hicks, which is like, um, you know, it's a counterfeit labor. It's actually the, you know, it, it helps your, you get ready for labor. Um, but many people go to the hospital thinking this is it. And that's how we think, oh, this is it. This is it, the day of the rapture. You know, this is it. It's, it could be any second, guys. We've had a lot of Braxton Hicks in the last couple years since the pandemic, haven't we? But um, one day, it's going to be the real thing. Okay, labor. And that baby's going to be born. All right? And, and these labor pains that have been lately, the Lord has shown me the ring of fire. Israel is surrounded by a ring of fire. But when that ring of fire came, it's been a couple months now, the Lord told me that that is exactly where the body of Christ is, the bride of Christ, that ring of fire. And in childbirth, that is when that baby is descending into the birth canal. And the head, I don't want to get too graphic here, but it's a searing pain that the woman feels. Okay, when the baby's head begins to put pressure. That's called the ring of fire. And that's exactly where we are in labor, brothers and sisters. And, you know, as I said, spiritual warfare is tough. Labor is tough. What do you do? Breathe. They teach you breathing classes to breathe. Oh, that's stuff that didn't help me at all. I was screaming so loud that the next day I had to apologize to the doctor who came in. Um, and the next day I had laryngitis. I couldn't even speak. I was screaming so loud. Nobody prepared me for this birth. And so it is spiritually. Um, <clears throat> we may have to go through, I don't know what, but we don't have to walk alone. We are not walking alone. We're going through this together. We're brothers and sisters in Christ going through this labor pains together. And Jesus Christ is our leader. He's our savior, our deliverer. He is the deliverer. And we are about to be delivered unto him, raptured, called up, caught up, harpazoed in that air. And I have had a peace that passes all understanding lately. A peace. And we can only have that peace in Christ. People say, uh, how could you have this peace after all this crazy stuff going on? Because we're trusted in Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. Um, because all things work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Because soon and very soon we're going to see our king. That's why we can have joy and peace in the midst of what's going on. And it's not like we're faking it. People who aren't saved can fake it. Can't they? They can put on a nice face and, you know, hey, how you guys doing today? Hi, y'all. No. This is a peace that radiates from us in the deepest, darkest hours. You know that the darker it is, the brighter we shine. Okay? And Jesus is the light of the world. And we are not to hide our little lights. Don't put it under a bushel. Don't be afraid of sharing the gospel. Please don't let the en enemy intimidate you into not sharing the gospel because you might make a mistake or because you don't know this. That's the enemy. All right, I'm going to end with, behold, I stand at the door and knock. I heard a faint knocking tonight at my heart's door and I was ashamed to answer for I knew it was the Lord. There he stood looking humble and sad, his eyes full of compassion, like a concerned, thoughtful dad. Don't you know, he said, I know everything. And there's nothing hidden, child, that I haven't seen. I've watched you destroying yourself and my spirit has grieved. And my intention in visiting tonight is to set your soul free. Behold, my child, I stand at the door and knock. 
but only from your side can that door be unlocked. I have many treasures awaiting you, but remember, my path is narrow and my followers few. I won't force the issue and I'll never intrude. I respect your will and wouldn't dare be rude. And there's one more thing before I go. You must believe that I love you so. That alone will be sufficient to meet all of your needs. But the requirement is that you truly believe. My love and truth will set your soul free, even when your will doesn't want to agree. Reach out and touch me. Call on my name. If you're a true believer, you'll know that's why I came. I came to set the captives free. And beloved, this is your name written down in front of me. We, our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Don't ever be ashamed of a sin that you're doing or a sin that you're caught up in and let the enemy make you ashamed of it. Jesus wants to fellowship with us and come right into that garbage. He is inside of us. So allow him. He is a gentleman. So the Holy Spirit is not going to say, um, he's not going to intrude. But the enemy puts thoughts in our heads like, you know, oh, God, you've blown it now. Forget it. You're, you're, you're done. God, God, what, what, what could you do for God now? What could you do for the kingdom? You might as well just sit down and be quiet and just hope that you're saved. That's the enemy. The Bible says that you may know that you're saved. We are saved because of what Jesus Christ did. Don't ever question your salvation because the enemy if he can get you to question your salvation, he can, he can get you to go anywhere in that. Okay? Because when you question your salvation, you're questioning that you belong to God. All right? We belong to him. We are completely, eternally secure in him. He will never leave us nor forsake us, ever, for any reason whatsoever. Does that give us a license to sin? No. It does not give us a license to sin. The sin will bring you to your knees. And God uses that. He will turn it around for good. Romans 8, 28. So allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to guide us, to lead us, to show us what we need to see on a daily basis. And draw near to God and he will draw near to us. I love you guys. Know that I am praying for you and yours daily. And, um, you know, we walk by faith and not by we walk by faith, not, I'm telling you, it's been a long day. Um, we walk by faith, not sight. Okay. So whatever we're seeing right now in the world that's happening, um, we have to trust that our God is bigger. He is greater. He's got this. All right. He's got this. He's God. He created this, everybody and everything. Okay. He created it. So don't question his final authority. Don't question his ability to do for you what you can't do for yourself. He's our deliverer. He's our healer. Call upon him. Just say, Jesus, I need you. He will answer us. Okay, and read Psalm 91. I love you guys. Until next time, keep looking up. All right, I'm sure draw a sign. God bless you guys.